This video will be refuting an argument I've heard several times. The argument is as follows. The area around the sun, where a planet is capable of maintaining liquid water for a very long period of time, and thus is capable of sustaining life, is so vastly smaller than the dimensions of the solar system that the fact that the Earth happens to be within this area is unlikely to the point of being miraculous. First of all, I should clarify that the area being referred to here is called the Continuously Habitable Zone, or CHZ. But to understand where this argument breaks down, we first need to take a look at the anatomy of our solar system. Within the inner section, there is a so-called cluster of terrestrial planets relatively close to the Sun, comprised of Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. We then need to examine why the terrestrial planets formed so close to the Sun. Simply put, heat from the proto-sun caused the area of the protoplanetary disk close to it to remain hotter than the outer regions. It would be hot enough to vaporize everything, so when it cooled, the condensates would be put in radial order. The lighter, more gaseous elements would dissipate from the close inner region, and only the elements that melted at high temperatures would condense there. Now, the CHZ of a main sequence star, like our Sun, is located in this area. To get a rough measurement of the area's dimensions, let's use the inner edge of the asteroid belt as a marker, which is about 2.1 astronomical units, or AU. So, the only way the argument could hold any weight is if the size of the CHZ is minuscule, relative to the size of this area where terrestrial planets are likely to form. Now, the process of calculating the CHC of a star is difficult, due to the negative feedback loop generated by the carbon silicate cycle. Over time, the Earth's climate is stabilized against increasing insulation by this negative feedback. Higher surface temperatures increase the precipitation, which increases the weathering rates, resulting in decreasing atmospheric CO2 content and decreasing greenhouse effect. For these reasons, a degree of educated guesswork regarding geology and atmospheric conditions is necessary. Nonetheless, our Sun's CHC can be calculated, and although it is probably considerably larger, a very conservative estimate puts it extending from about 0.95 AU at its inner edge to about 1.15 AU at its outer edge. That puts its diameter at about 0.2 AU, or about 18,591,245 miles. When that figure is divided by the 2.1 AU of the planetary cluster area, we find that the CHC occupies about 10% of it. That is quite a sizable chunk. To say that of the four terrestrial planets, it would be unlikely to the point of being miraculous for just one of them to attain an orbit within a zone taking up about 10% of an area they're likely to form in any way is more than unjustified. It's downright irresponsible, especially when one considers that there are hundreds of billions of stars in our galaxy and tens of sextillions of stars in the visible universe. With the CHZ occupying about 10% of the area close to main sequence stars, there are likely numerous stars with terrestrial planets in their CHZs. Now, that addresses why this particular argument is invalid, but if you'd like to go to the heart of the matter, watch this video where I explain why the fine-tuning argument in general is fallacious. A link is provided in the video description area. 